Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. You are watching India Today. Perhaps the most feared president in Sri Lankan history, a politician known best for the ruthless iron hand with which he crushed the Tamil Tigers, took cover of darkness to escape from his burning nation. The unceremonious fleeing of Gotabaya Rajapaksa is a story that has stunned the world and we're going to show you exactly how it happened on 5 Live at 5 p.m. Go powered by Solar Hai Lagana to Luminous Ko Bulana in association with the new Volkswagen Virtus. The fall of the Rajapaksha dynasty. Gotabaya flees to Maldives. Protesters take over the Prime Minister's office. Anger boils over, crisis spirals. The police is firing on the protesters. They were suddenly started marching towards the Prime Minister's residence. Similar pictures we are seeing at Ground Zero here in Colombo. India Today, the only channel reporting from every epicenter. Go, Gota, gone. Once the most feared man in Sri Lanka, like a thief in the dark, he gets into a military plane, taking cover of darkness, he abandons his burning country. That's the ignoble, pathetic story of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. A man widely regarded as the ruthless leader who crushed the Tamil Tigers. Today, taking his family with him, he escaped, taking the protection of darkness in a Sri Lankan Air Force aircraft to escape from his country, refusing to stay on the island to face the consequences. That is the embarrassing legacy that Gotabaya Rajapaksa leaves behind as he abandons his country. I'm Shivaroor. This is Five Live. We'll tell you how it happened. First, the headlines. Massive escalation in the Sri Lankan crisis. Prime Minister Vikramasinghe takes over as interim president. As President Gotabaya flees to the Maldives, imposes state of emergency and curfew amidst the protests. India Today, the only channel reporting in every site of this crisis. We're reporting live from every zone of the Lankan crisis. Our reporters brave tear gas shells and the crackdown. This is unmatched coverage being watched across the world, ladies and gentlemen. We're currently outside the Prime Minister's office and currently what is happening here is that has been had shelled and for not public for public which enter the police are now running away. They are the crowds who are dispersing and running away from the Prime Minister's residence. Earlier they came over here demanding that Ranil Vikram Singh should not be made the, the actual uh, next president over here. You could see as we speak, for public police is using tear gas and police are also going over there. And currently now this place everybody is running away because of the chaos over there. The entire place has turned chaos. Police are unable to control the crowd. They have used tear gas at this point. And as we speak. 
Narcotics Control Bureau's damning charge sheet in the Sushant Singh Rajput case. Narcotics Bureau says the late actor's girlfriend Riya Chakravarti pushed him into drug addiction, used his money to buy and supply narcotics. Musewala murder mastermind Lawrence Bishnoi spills murder Salman Khan plot, says he plotted a hit on the Bollywood superstar in 2018 for the killing of sacred black bucks. Bombay fights early morning waterlogging after torrential rain. Over 80 dead in Gujarat after fifth day of rain havoc. Flood situation grim in Telangana. The latest in the unfolding crisis following the exit of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa by night in a military aircraft from Sri Lanka late last night. It now emerges that President Rajapaksa, who landed in Maldives late last night, will now be boarding a flight very shortly to Singapore to claim asylum in that country. What an incredible and embarrassing fall from grace for President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Once the most feared leader of Sri Lanka, he is running from his country. He is fleeing with absolutely no care at all about facing the consequences in his country. President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, who has a reputation for being ruthless, taking cover of darkness late last night, got into a Sri Lankan Air Force plane and smuggled himself out of Sri Lanka to Maldives. But to take this story forward and to get you the biggest voices in this unfolding crisis, we're going to go live across now to India today's Rahul Kaval, who's joined by superstar cricketer, commentator, and one of the biggest and most iconic Sri Lankans, Sanat Jaisuria. Over to you, Rahul. Joining us now, live and exclusive from Colombo, is the man who revolutionized one day batting. The explosive uh, batting that you see in T20 was started by Sanat Jai Surya back in the World Cup uh, for One Day Internationals and he now joins us live on India Today. One of the most iconic Sri Lankans alive. Mr. Jai Surya, welcome to India Today. This is a very uh, troublesome time for you individually and for the people of Sri Lanka and I think I speak for all Indians uh, when we say we're looking very carefully at what's happening and the people of Sri Lanka are in our thoughts all the time. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to start by asking you, Sanat, about the departure of President Rajpakse in the way that he did this uh, sudden move to Maldives from there seeking asylum in Sri Lanka. When you were seeing the build-up, the protests happening out in the streets of Colombo over the last several weeks and months, did you anticipate that this is the way uh, it would end for one of the most powerful political families in Sri Lanka? Uh, no, I, I never thought uh, it would happen like this. Uh, and um, we all uh, was thinking that he will resign and remain in uh, our country. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And he has left the country early this morning uh, to Maldives. And then thereafter, he will uh, go to another country, which we don't know at the moment. So uh, it's a very sad day um, because the Sri Lankans, the, the protesters, been protesting for last about several months now. And uh, for for why we do that is um, everyone has seen, and I think you all have been seen, and uh, what's going on in my country, the, the current the fuel crisis, and uh, electricity, also uh, gas issue, the health issues, everything is there in my country uh, in the last few months. So unfortunately, um, um, the, the things, uh, what the people wanted is um, not there. So the people have been uh, absorbing all the pressure for a longer period. And um, they started after a very long time and people have come out on the street and start protesting. So the protesting is very peaceful one. 
it's not non-violence. So that is why people have been protesting peacefully. So they will continue peaceful protest, uh, protest. And the 9th of July became uh, to a, another level. And they all went into the president's palace and the president's secretariat, also the temple trees, and demanding that president and prime minister should recite. So, unfortunately, still that didn't happen, even though they promised on the third. At this moment, there's no electricity, there's no fuel. The people of Sri Lanka are very badly off. What do you think should be the next step? There's talk of the opposition coming together to form a government. Who would you like to see as the new prime minister and president? What do you think happens from here? The, the thing is, uh, it, it's up to the speaker and, and the whole party leaders to come up and make a stable uh, government for a few months with a, with a cabinet. So then the, the international community will see that uh, the, our country is stable. Then only the international community will come and help Sri Lanka. Because we need help at the moment. Because only India did it um, earlier on and uh, giving us about $4 billion more than $4 billion to Sri Lanka um, to come out of this crisis, but still we couldn't. So we need other countries' help also to come out of this crisis. Sure. No, but in terms of uh, the opposition coming together, because the critical question is, what Ranil uh, Vikramasinghe was trying to do is essentially what the new government will also have to try and build on. So what is it that you're expecting? Because a lot of these protesters are saying they don't want anybody who's been in power in the past to be a part of the future. They want a new government of new faces. Uh, but how will this be different from what the Vikramasinghe government is trying to do? The thing is, the, the protesters first, they asked president to resign uh, and also the protesters want um, uh, Prime Minister resigned. So, at the moment, um, uh, no one has resigned. Even the President has not uh, given the letter of resignation yet. So, this is why the protests start today. So, I think um, uh, the people want to see the resignation first. So, it has not happened yet. So, the, this is why the, uh, the people are waiting. Then, the even whatever the, the government, the Speaker was talking with the other uh, party leaders and for that uh, the, 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 the the talking with the other parties the protesters also can get involved on their views it's not harm uh, getting them involved and getting their thoughts into our system because it's not any, any harm so i hope uh, the speaker and the, the party leaders um, even other party leader uh, the, the muslims tamil party leaders we all need to get together in this, this moment because we can't divide, fight for individual positions won't, uh, will not help Sri Lanka. This is, this is a team game you need to come out with. You can't play individually, come out and play their own, 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 own role and perform it out. So they need to come as a team and perform. When you were batting, you were a thorn in India's flesh quite often. And we didn't particularly like that very much. But in a sense, you're one of the most beloved Sri Lankans uh, in India and huge recall and popularity. Can you tell our viewers how life has been for you individually and for people around you over the last few days? Um, I, I think I, I've been here properly, but uh, what I, I think what you said was around my... Uh, the How's life been me? for you? How's life been for you? Uh, shortages, think, price rise... And for people around, you just describe what life's been like for Sanat Jaisurya. It's been very difficult. Telling you the truth, it's very, very difficult for the Sri Lankans, including myself. It's not very easy. The people are in queues for four or five days for fuel and for gas. So, essentially, like the medicines, uh, running out of medicines in the mostly the government hospitals. So, it's uh, very difficult. That is why I said, uh, we need politicians to get together and come up with a plan and give that confidence to the people. The people doesn't have confidence uh, uh, in politicians anymore. So they need to make that confidence. So I hope the, the, the speaker and the whole party leaders come up with a plan, team plan, and work for the Sri Lankan people, for 22 million people are suffering. Okay. You also spoke about help from other countries. Uh, for those watching in India and from our government, 
Uh, Sanat, what is it that you'd like to ask for or suggest uh, on behalf of the Lankan people? Uh, what we were discussing all this time, that, you know, uh, the, whoever the stable government comes, they, they should have a plan to go to the international uh, the community. So we, we know that we don't have fuel, we don't have gas, we, we don't have electricity issues, uh, medicine. So they, they need to come up with a plan to go to the international community and ask from the international community. So uh, not I am asking from international well, I can say that we need this, we don't have fuel. So I, I'm not in the government, but we are putting pressure to the government, come up with a plan and tell the people and what we are doing, this is what we are doing. So then the international community will come and help Sri Lanka. Is there a sense of betrayal that you feel from China? The fact that all these vanity projects in terms of ports, airports were built with no clear return on investment, no economic utility, uh, leading to a debt spiral for which uh, to, uh, Sri Lanka is paying for uh, with these very grave consequences. Yeah, but the thing is now we, we no point we are talking about what we had in the past. Now you, you can't do anything. But we know that there are big loans from China, big loans from India. We got a lot of things from all, all, all the countries. But the thing is now, the presently, what the, the protesters is asking, the stable place, the stable politicians who can take out this critical situation out of, out of hand and get the people a better life uh, for Sri Lankans. Lastly, I've been reading a lot of reports about Jay Surya toying with the idea of getting into politics, Jay Surya rejecting the idea of getting into politics. Do you think uh, this is a moment where someone like you should really pad up, go out on the political pitch and bat for Lanka? I'm, I'm a civilian in Sri Lanka, that's all. I'm a civilian. Okay, I leave it over there. Uh, Sarat Jai Surya for joining us, for being as direct and candid as you always are. Thank you very much. And as I said earlier, everyone, you know, very worried about what's happening in Lanka and hoping that in our neighborhood, in the Emerald Islands, peace and tranquility prevails very quickly. What do you think should happen to the Rajpakse family? Do you think they should pay for their crimes? Uh, they fled. Do you think they need to pay for landing Sri Lanka in the mess that it's ended up in? Yeah, the, the, the but not only me, that everyone is have been um, saying that um, because the mismanagement is where, where we are now. So this is the, the the people. That's how people think. That is what the, the protesters are thinking. That is what the Sri Lankan community is thinking. So the uh, thing is now uh, we can do all the things now later. We can discuss all these things what they have done previously, we can do that. But my thing is, as a Sri Lankan, as a civilian of my country, for us to come out of this situation, we need to come up with a plan, the politician presently. So we need a quick, short-term plan and to save our people uh, in this country. Sanat Jai Surya, for joining us in India today, thank you very much. We wish you and your people all the very best. Thank you, sir. Thank I you want to now take you back to my colleague Shivaru. Shiv, take it away. And you've just seen the latest in a string of top-level voices from Sri Lanka. That was Rahul Kaval in conversation with none other than Sanat Jaisuriya. Unmissable opinion from the biggest Sri Lankans always here on India today because this is what the country is looking like. Each and every one of these images from India today's cameras painting you a picture of the crisis that Lanka is in and it is escalating with each passing day. Let's take a look now at some of the most defining images that have come to represent the crisis as it played out today. In every one of these places, India today and its cameras were present. Angry protesters stormed Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe's Colombo office demanding that he follow President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in resigning, which has not happened. Well, this comes days after his home was set on fire by protesters. This is Pramod Madhav's camera recording this absolute chaos. Listen to this. Of 
that bill. Well, amidst the widespread protests against the Prime Minister and President, the Sri Lankan Air Force helicopters were seen flying low near the protest site. This happened for the first time since the protests began against the government. Is being seen as an intimidatory gesture and has gone viral online. These pictures captured by India Today. Another big defining image, security forces were seen using tear gas shells and water cannons to disperse the crowd when they tried to enter the Prime Minister's office, urging him to resign along with President Rajapaksa, India Today's Ashutosh and Pramod amidst that crowd to get you these riveting frontline images. Let's listen in. ये 9 जुलाई को बिल्कुल यही कुछ कोलंबो के सड़कों पे हुआ था। दरअसल ये सारे लोग नाराज थे। प्रधानमंत्री रानिल विक्रम सिंघे के घर जा रहे थे। उनको रोकना चाहते थे और चाहते थे कि वो इस्तीफा दे। This is to disperse the crowd. Look at these amount of huge face-off. Another big defining image between protesters and security forces as they went on the rampage in different parts of the country. An indefinite curfew has also been imposed across the western province of Sri Lanka, of which Colombo is a part. Big defining image number five, commandos took to the streets to contain growing protests as Lankans have hit the streets in even larger numbers. This is what many parts of Sri Lanka are looking like at this point of time. It's already a highly militarized country. And this is what it looks like in several places today. Once again on India Today's cameras. Defining image number six, many protesters were carried away, away by the security forces as the protests against the existing government turned violent. Furious protesters are adamant on Prime Minister and President's resignation. It has not come so far. Big, big agitation escalation. Meanwhile, defining image number seven today, and this one is a riveting one. The national broadcaster of Sri Lanka, Rupa Vahini, has gone off air. This after protesters stormed the TV station studios and demanded that only programs related to their agitation be telecast. You even saw that little clip of one of the protesters turning news anchor. Defining image number eight, protesters continue to gather outside and inside the presidential secretariat in Colombo. They were seen waving Sri Lankan flags and raising slogans. Ladies and gentlemen, the numbers of protesters are only increasing on the ground and India today is among them bringing you all of these pictures live. It's no exaggeration when I say that India is watching India Today's coverage because of the riveting nature of the ground reports that India Today's Pramod Madhav and Ashutosh Mishra have been bringing to you from the ground. It's a country that is burning. The political turmoil is only escalating. India Today is at the heart of this agitation, reporting like nobody else is. Not from the sidelines, but right in the epicenter. Don't miss this ground report by Pramod. So first it was the President's Secretariat, then the President's Palace, and then the Prime Minister's home, and now finally it is the, the Prime Minister's office as well. Protesters are occupying the Prime Minister's office. This amidst armed guards, like heavily armed guards are also here for our protection and to make sure nothing untoward occurs. But this is a lawn of the President's office, which is completely uh, filled with public and protesters from Galface, who were earlier, who came here after like several uh, rounds, even after like several 
rounds of tear gas were flashed. I mean, uh, uh, hit on them. They did not budge. They did come, keep coming again and again. After uh, nearly four hours of struggle, they finally took over the prime minister's office as well. On one side, armed personnel are here. They are cooperating and making sure that nothing untoward occurs at this point. These are the armed guards protecting the prime minister's office. At the same time, they make sure that the public also cooperate. That's the only thing they ask. Imagine this had happened after four hours of struggle and that started with a news that protesters at the Prime Minister's office were attacked. That news turned volatile, the situation, the entire situation into volatile, but later into a different kind of scenario where the army is also supporting the protesters and they are actually coming one by one. They are being given away. This way is made by the armed force of protesters at this point. The start case is divided. On one side, the public are allowed to walk inside. This is a kind of a symbolic method for the public to show that they have taken over, all because Ranul Vikramasinghe was announced as the acting president and that did not go well with the public who also stated not just the president but also the prime minister should resign. So in this room completely occupied are the army who are cooperating with the public so far and no untoward incident has occurred except for tear gassing in the morning. Now everything seems to be so quiet and the prime minister, now acting president Ranul Vikramasinghe has said after an all party the government is formed, he will for sure resign. The public are also still waiting for the resignation of Gotabaya Rajapaksha from Colombo and from the Prime Minister's office, Pramod Madhav for India Today. Protests in the streets of Colombo still continues and the people in near the uh, are still protesting and here they are holding a march, not just a simple march, they are also carrying the shields in front of them to symbolically say that they are here and not just that. This is the same place where multiple rounds of tear gas were fired upon them to disperse them. Still the crowd is coming over and they are protesting row after row, demanding that not just Gotabaya but Ranil Vikramasinghe, also the, the acting Prime Minister, the Pr President president also resigned. However, Arunil Vikramasinghe so far has said that he'll be the president until an all-party government is formed and he claims that the country is under threat of fascist government, fascist uh, forces and that's the reason he wants, he is as the, appointed as the acting president and he claims that that's the reason he has also declared an emergency. These have not gone well with the protesters who are still on the streets of Colombo surrounding the prime minister's uh, office and they are still protesting. Pramod Madhav for India Today. For over 90 hours now, angry Sri Lankan citizens have laid total siege to the capital city of Colombo. You've seen it in every one of the images that we've brought to you live. India Today's Ashutosh is our second reporter on the ground who got you this ground report during tear gassing. Take a look, pay attention to every single frame of this report. There is, of course, the people are annoyed that why uh, Vikram Singh has been given a presidential ship uh, when there could be a new, uh, totally new uh, face in the government. But for now, what our colleague Pramod was reporting, this is how you know, the police, the uh, military personnel, the entire administration is now cooperating with these protesters. Or you can say the protesters are cooperating with the uh, authorities here. This is the main gate of Prime Minister's office. People are entering in huge cave. And this, these are the human chain have been made to ensure that people who are coming here, they get chance to visit uh, Prime Minister's office one by one with discipline. Nothing is harmed, no harm to public property. Look at this human chain. That is the discipline these volunteers are maintaining and ensuring that there has to be things safe, nothing is harmed, nothing damaged. And if I could enter, say, everything remains safe. People, those who are willing to go upstairs, they are going to other side. Ever since the Prime Minister has become the president, this office, of course, there was anger and protesters took over the Prime Minister's office. We are going to enter on the first floor of Prime Minister's office. Several round of cabinet meetings were taking place at this place just, you know, a couple of days ago. But suddenly things have changed, particularly in the last few hours. We are on the first floor and this is the executive office. Even people are asking us and they are navigating us, they are guiding us. And all these forces, if you see, there are civilians and there are armed forces as well. These are the special forces, Jawan, and the civilians. And this is a totally different picture that we are seeing in a democracy. Just a few minutes ago, almost in a confrontation, minutes later, it's just helping each other. We're entering in this, another portion of the Prime Minister's office. 
there you see only the protesters sitting inside other side uh, the army persons they are protecting the public property so if you the nothing has been touched nothing has been harmed no damage to the public property that's the discipline and the restraint both including the civilians and armed personnel are showing this is what is happening in colombo perhaps never seen picture in any democratic country in democracy they were fighting uh, against the government this is really going to be a long battle it's all started been hours now and when we started walking with these protesters sudden all of sudden it was spontaneous reaction there were few only few hundred suddenly it became few thousand and now i cannot recall the numbers here just more than uh, you know 7 800 a meter this entire stretch 70 or uh, 80 feet with you know the width of this road and that's totally crowded that's and one after one it is really becoming difficult for the armed forces to control the crowd everyone just trying to enter the protesters trying to enter the prime minister's office uh, the soldiers there the army there the air force commandos there the stf there they're trying to disperse the crowd and the rounds of tear shells that have been fired here just on one day perhaps in any country would not have been fired even you know in in the entire month if there is uncertainty or there is some kind of chaos so that's what is happening here and most of the see the people uh, the protesters are even quite trained they're just taking their clothes away you know uh, dipped in a water soaked in a water and are just throwing over the tear shells several people injured at least 50 to 60 people i have seen injured one after one they are helping each other clearly the uncertainty and this anger is actually boiling right up to these people the shots again fire shots again fired in there so rounds after rounds being fired by the armed forces to disperse the crowd this is the how people are injured because there was chaotic situation when shells fire the crowd started dispersing and that led to the scuff you know uh, that led to the entire situation here and that perhaps you know also causing the injuries from, to, to these protesters several women children men have been taken to the nearby hospital so clearly this is totally anger boiling after the speaker's announcement that the prime minister vikram singh will be the acting president i can see the policemen or the security persons with gas mask with tear shells with guns are standing but only remain a mute spectator you heard the senior army official say that we do, we are not stopping them we are only requesting them do not damage the public property but these are the barricades were placed to stop these protesters but that seems that they totally overpowered these policemen here and now they are marching further clearly since you know this entire uh, self motivated protest is totally leaderless there is no leader who can lead this and of course since the violent clashes has stopped now they are managing also the traffic uh, they are allowing the vehicles to pass through and another passage for these protesters and this seems to be the impact when the top top army officials uh, appeal them to do not create uh, chaos on the road let, let's not uh, public suffer and that seems to be the how people have you know silently agreed to it and they are cooperating with these agency the protest continues slogan continues and also on the road you can see the better traffic arrangements being made by none other than but only these protesters oh shit sanjay kinare ho jao hawai firing air firing run fire fire you know the police is firing on the protesters they were suddenly started marching towards the prime minister residence multiple tear shells and egg you know the shots in the air is being fired here in colombo suddenly i saw all the protesters walking the moment they got to know that uh, uh, president has fled now they're demanding prime minister to resign this is the prime minister's office they all started marching there was a barricade they just trying to breach the barricade suddenly they started firing tear shells look at the other side it's all <coughs> multiple tear shells this is to disperse the crowd look at these amount of the shells fired here in colombo exactly what unfolded on uh, <coughs> 9 july similar pictures we are seeing at ground zero here in colombo these protesters now covering their face because with a you know this is how they are preventing themselves from the smoke all are just taking their clothes away and covering the face so there were multiple directions where the shots were fired even the bullets and this was an attempt to disperse the crowd once they started marching Uh, towards the prime minister's office there you see again there's another look once again uh, armed forces the stf is trying to disperse the crowd just barely to see anything so this is exactly the similar picture again in colombo what unfolded on 9th of july the protesters won they will even uh, going to take over the prime minister's house and prime minister's office now these protesters seems 
have crossed the barricade. They again breached another safety barricade. Seems they all are trying to enter Ranil Vikram Singh's residence, Prime Minister's another office, and the Parliament. This is another showdown by the protesters, by Sri Lankans, the ordinary civilians. Almost the nation is on the verge of. Oh, there's a tear shell fire. Tear shell fire. Another tear shell. This is to disperse the crowd. And barely one can see where these tear shells are coming from. Multiple rounds, multiple rounds are being fired. This is to disperse the crowd and send them to multiple places because the gathering at one place could overpower the authorities. These are the burning images here, what we are seeing in Colombo. Similar picture unfolded on 9th of July. Yet again, battle on the streets in Colombo. The crowd has totally overpowered the armed forces. There you see the special task force of the Sri Lankan police, totally armed with the gear, but none of them using force. And this is clearly a go-ahead to the protesters. They have refused to take hard action against these protesters. Now they are freely marching towards the Prime Minister's office. Of course, because multiple rounds of the tear shells were fired, the eyes are burning, throats are totally choked. And there at the side, there was a water cannon which was to prevent these uh, protesters to move further. Now the water cannon has been kept aside by the policemen themselves, giving a go-ahead, a free go-ahead to these people to move uh, further. They have crossed the Prime Minister's office, which is right here. The army has conveyed a message, do not uh, damage the public properties. If you're marching, march peacefully. And that's exactly where you see these army, the uh, Sri Lankan army jawans, heavily armed but none of them acting against these protesters. The, the top army official has conveyed a message just to keep marching peacefully. They have allowed this protest to take place and all of them are now heading towards the parliament. Their first aim was to reach uh, Prime Minister's office. Here, army convinced them not to gather here, do not damage the property. On 9th July, when the protesters marched, there was damage to certain properties, public property, there was violent clashes. Even today we have seen them again, they march in further. But since they have crossed the Prime Minister's office, the next is the parliament, barely few steps from here, these protesters trying to enter the parliament. And there you see the huge convoy of the cops, that entire fleet of the Colombo Club, the local police station. But again you see, without arm, without baton, and they are watching these protesters moving and clearly this seems to be the silent support to these protests remember there have been anger even against amongst these protesters against the government against this entire administration and of the day they have also suffered through this economic crisis and now the protesters have been given go ahead they're marching towards the parliament <laughs> I can see the policemen or the security persons with gas masks, with tear shells, with guns are standing but only remain a mute spectator. You heard the senior army official say that we, do, we are not stopping them, we are only requesting them to not damage the public property but these are the barricades were placed to stop these protesters but that seems that they totally overpowered these policemen here and now they are marching further clearly since you know this entire uh, self-motivated protest is totally leaderless there is no leader who can lead this and of course since the violent clashes has stopped now they are managing also the traffic uh, they are allowing the vehicles to pass through and another passage for these protesters and this seems to be the impact when the top, top army officials uh, appeal them to do not create uh, chaos on the road let, let's not uh, public suffer and that seems to be the how people have you know silently agreed to it and they are cooperating with these agency the protest continues slow running continues and also on the road you can see the better traffic arrangements made, being made by none other than but only these protesters now this is these images are everyone's reality right now in Sri Lanka. You know you might imagine that this is happening only in some places while that may be largely be true but everybody is affected by the images you're seeing because everyone feels part of this people's uprising. Now while Sri Lanka spirals into total collapse, it's teetering on that edge right now, its former president Gotabaya Rajapaksa is currently in the island nation of Maldives, 700 kilometers away from Sri Lanka. India today can confirm that President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has been granted a safe haven 
in no less than the Waldorf Astoria Super Luxury Hotel in the Maldives. It's an Ita Fushi, a property owned by business tycoon Mohammed Ali Jana. Jana is a former Maldivian foreign minister, Abdullah Shahid's right-hand man. The Maldivian staff at the property have confirmed that the Sri Lankan first family is hiding at that property. They've expressed their displeasure over the stay. A night stay in this swanky seven-star property costs between four to seven lakh Indian rupees per night. That's where the president of Sri Lanka, who has run by cover of darkness from his country, is hiding in Maldives. The government of Maldives is yet to issue a comment on this entire issue. Locals and Sri Lankans, however, have condemned the Maldivian government for allowing access to the runaway Rajapaksa family. Sneha is with me live and she's got more information about this hotel. Incredible. His country is burning on the verge of collapse. He's the man in the spotlight of blame, being blamed for this entire crisis. And he has just spent a night in a super luxury hotel, Sneha, in Maldives. Yes, Shiv, you know, to think of it, people in Sri Lanka are not having access to basic necessities. A kg of rice costs over 400 rupees. A lot of middle class families have admitted that they are unable to afford two square meals a day. And just contrast that with this. These are pictures of the world of Estonia in Maldives. This is actually in South Mali in Maldives, the same place where there are protests right now against the government for hosting Gotabaya Rajapaksa. This is where President Gotabaya Rajapaksa is pretty much chilling out tonight. You rightly said this is extremely expensive. It costs anywhere between 5 to 7 lakh rupees to stay here. These are pictures of this plush resort in South Mali. Let me take you through, through some of the details, uh, uh, Shiv. Uh, this is where President is going to stay tonight and this is where he's really going to be chilling while the people of his country continue to suffer. This is the plush holiday resort in South Mali where President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, you know, completely oblivious, completely insensitive to what the people in his country are going through, is going to be spending the night in uh, with his uh, wife and his bodyguard is what we are really picking up. And this is as expensive as over 5 lakh rupees a night. This is a villa and this is uh, in South Mali in Maldives essentially. This is where he's going to relax away from all the turmoil, the political tensions and the economic crisis that Sri Lanka has found itself in. The president of the country is absolutely indifferent and has chosen to escape to this resort in South Mali, at least for tonight. Incredible. I mean, you know, Sneha, four to five lakh rupees is what one night in that hotel costs. That's where President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has just spent the night. We don't know if he's going to spend another night in this hotel. He might be fleeing from there to either UAE or even Singapore, we're hearing. But please digest the fact that as his country burns, the first family of Sri Lanka has just spent the night here. That's the reality of our politicians, ladies and gentlemen. Let's show you the escape by night of a man once regarded as the most ruthless political leader of Sri Lanka. Take a look at where Sri Lanka is right here, of course. He's flown 700 kilometers by cover of darkness, not a daylight flight, mind you. He has fleed, fled from Sri Lanka on an airplane plane all the way to Maldives and he's there right now in the Maldives which is about 700 kilometers away from Sri Lanka his next stop could either be the UAE or he could fly to Singapore which is in this particular area so right now Gotabaya Rajapaksa ruthless leader of Sri Lanka is sitting in a seven-star deluxe hotel in Maldives Here's a look. We've decoded how he escaped. Back in 2009, when I was covering the Tamil Tiger War, I actually had a chance to get into precisely the kind of aircraft that has flown Gotabaya Rajapaksa out of Sri Lanka to the safety of a seven-star deluxe hotel in Maldives. Take a look. A shameful fall from strength for one of Sri Lanka's most powerful presidents, hunted cornered and taking refuge in the cover of darkness.
rumored for days to have fled the country, Gotabaya Rajapaksa finally confirmed local suspicions. He quietly boarded a military aircraft late on Tuesday night and fled his burning country. As protesters slept, four days into the country's biggest uprising against the Rajapaksha family, the president secretly smuggled himself out of Sri Lanka and flew to Maldives with five family members and three staffers. Last heard, they're being kept protected at a resort near the Malay airport and could be preparing for an onward escape to another country, possibly Singapore. Where are you going? I'm going to parliament. Reason? President Gotabaya had earlier conveyed that he would be resigning on Wednesday, but his stealthy escape in the darkness has thrown that plan in question too with Ranil Vikramasinghe being appointed interim president. The Lankan parliament is scheduled to resume on July the 16th. Fresh elections will be held on July the 20th to elect a new president, the nominations for which will be held on July the 19th. But the president who hasn't resigned yet has fled with his family, unwilling to remain and face the consequences of his rule. In fact, Gotabaya has not been seen in public since last Friday. He fled his official residence in Colombo's maximum security temple trees area on July the 9th, moments before thousands of protesters broke through police barricades and stormed the VIP compound. Once the ruthless face of the crackdown on the LTTE and a brave new Lanka, Gotabaya Rajapaksa is now cowering for safety, far from his furious citizens. A steeper fall from grace cannot be imagined. With Pramod Madhav and Ashutosh Mishra in Colombo, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, you're going to be hearing a lot about the Rajapaksas over the next few days and weeks as we continue to escalate our coverage of the Sri Lankan crisis. So let me, you know, acquaint you a little better with the Rajapaksa clan, the most powerful first family of Sri Lanka. Of course, the man in the middle of all of it right now is Gotabaya Rajapaksa. He's still the president. He hasn't resigned just yet. He, of course, is chilling out in a seven-star luxury hotel in, uh, in Maldives. His elder brother is Mahinda Rajapaksa, really the patriarch of the Rajapaksa clan. He's been president, he was prime minister, he's resigned, he is still in Sri Lanka. Chamal Rajapaksha is the third brother. He was the irrigation minister between 2020 and 2022. Many of those decisions were taken under him. He has also, of course, resigned. Basil Rajapaksa, who is being blamed for a large part of the economic crisis in which Sri Lanka is in currently, has resigned. He was the finance minister for the last year. Uh, the, 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 the second generation of the Rajapaksas are also, of course, under the spotlight. Mahinda's two sons are Yoshita, he's the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, and Namal, who has resigned as the Sports Minister. Flamboyant lifestyles, fast cars, etc. You get the drift. All political first families have that. Then you've got Shashindra, who's uh, the son of Chamal Rajapaksa. He was an advanced, advanced agriculture minister, also has resigned at this point of time. But to understand what really happened in Sri Lanka is to not just look at the political decisions that were taken by the Rajapaksas, but the other circumstances that compounded a series of terrible decisions, bad luck, and the absolute folly of kowtowing with China. Take a look. So what really led to the downward spiral of what was once known as the island paradise? The country is marred by its worst economic crisis since 1948. Experts blame the Rajapaksa government for mismanaging the government finances and ill-timing tax cuts. The current crisis was accelerated by deep tax cuts promised by Rajapaksa during a 2019 election campaign. Now, these tax cuts were enacted months before the COVID-19 pandemic, which literally wiped out parts of Sri Lanka's tourism-dependent economy. 
The war in Ukraine hurt supply chains, putting more pressure on an already pressurized economy. Huge piles of foreign debt, series of lockdowns, soaring inflation, shortage in fuel supply, fall in foreign currency reserves and devaluation of currency has adversely impacted the country's economy. The Rajapaksa government is now unable to pay for essential imports, including fuel, leading to debilitating power cuts. Ordinary Sri Lankans are also dealing with shortages and soaring inflation of medicine, of food, of fuel and of pretty much literally every daily necessity. The country's foreign debt rose from a meager 0.4 billion US dollars in 1970 to a whopping 56.3 billion US dollars in 2020. The trouble was that the country's external debt rose quicker than its GDP. The external debt to GDP ratio rose from 31.6% in 2010 to 32.4% in 2015 and further to 40.4% in 2020. The foreign reserves in Sri Lanka in 2018 were near 10 billion US dollars and this nosedived to under 2 billion US dollars in 2021. On the other side, the Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated more than 50% against the US dollar in this one year alone. The Sri Lankan rupee has now depreciated against the Indian rupee by 32%, against the euro by 31%, the pound sterling by 31%, the Japanese yen by 29%, all between January 1st and March 31st. This comes as statistics according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. So what next now for Sri Lanka? It seems like the country is seeking financial support from the IMF and turning to regional powers that may be able to help. Sri Lanka has requested help from China as well as with India. New Delhi has already issued a credit line of $1 billion in March. Uncertainty still prevails on what comes next. We've got more news breaks coming up from the unfolding drama on the island of Sri Lanka. India today's Ashutosh and Pramod are standing by to bring you the very latest. Right after this very short break, two fresh news breaks on what's happening next. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com or call 9999892171. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. You are watching India Today. You are... Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices.
It's a $44 billion soap opera that's playing out and Twitter has just taken a punch at the world's richest man, Elon Musk, for deciding not to complete his purchase of the social media giant. Twitter has sued Elon Musk and he has replied with a series of, you guessed it, tweets. Take a look. It's been a busy few months for the man who is revolutionizing travel on the roads, under the ground and even in space. Elon Musk first promised to buy Twitter for $44 billion. Initially, the management was lukewarm to the offer, but then accepted as the $44 billion valuation was too good to be ignored. The twist in the tale happened when Musk seemed to be struck by a case of buyer's remorse, saying that the so-called spam bots meant that Twitter wasn't worth that much money. He has finally backed out of the deal and the Twitter management is now running after him to ensure that the world's richest man stays true to his word. But after being sued, the world's richest man's reaction is just three words. Oh, the irony. Musk started accumulating Twitter stock late in January when the share was trading at around $37. By the time he disclosed his stake in early April, he had quietly become the largest single stakeholder in Twitter with 9.2% ownership. 20 days later, Elon Musk announced a $44 billion bid to take over Twitter fully. But it has been a journey full of twists and turns. Musk first put the deal on hold, asking the Twitter board for data on the number of fake and spam accounts. Weeks later, the billionaire decided to abandon the deal, criticizing the company for failing to provide enough information on fake accounts. Musk made merry of Twitter, taking him to court, setting the stage for what could be an interesting courtroom battle in weeks ahead. But Twitter isn't the one to sit silently. The company didn't mince words while launching a blistering attack on the Tesla CEO, alleging that he was not honoring the deal since it no longer serves his personal interests. The social media giant accused Musk of thrashing the company, disrupting its operations and destroying shareholder value. Well, it's been a roller coaster ride for Twitter's investors. Shares of the microblogging company have declined. Nearly the stock which rallied on the back of the deal in April is now down in the dumps this month after the deal turned sour. Now as Twitter drags the world's richest man to court, all eyes are set on what happens to Twitter next. Bureau Report, India Today. And we are the only channel, and I say this with pride, that's keeping the spotlight on the floods and suffering in different parts of the country. Pooja, up next on 6pm Prime, puts the spotlight on the suffering of people. This is a story that we will not ignore, and no one should ignore. Watch it next.